Landscape fabric, also known as weed barrier, weed block, landscape cloth, and so on, is a very controversial subject in landscaping. Many professionals use it under mulch to prevent weeds and promote using it. They say it's easy, it's practical, it makes weeds easier to, to pull out, but a lot of other sources are saying to not use landscape fabric. What, what is the truth? Should you use it? Is, is it just, you know, one of those things where maybe it's not the best practice, but it's, it's still a really practical th thing to do? The short answer is no. Uh, around gardens, around plants, no. You should not use landscape fabric as, as a mulch or under mulch around your gardens or around your plants. In fact, landscape fabric can increase maintenance, especially after the first couple of years over time, and it decreases the health of your garden plants. How is this possible? What can be better at decreasing the weeds in your landscape than this synthetic, thick synthetic fabric, right? Or what about other contexts? Under a stone mulch, under a pathway, under hardscaping, what about when you're mulching with rocks or river rocks? Do you use landscape fabric then? What about these bad invasive weed species? And if landscape fabric is so bad, why do people still use it? I have to put this disclaimer out there. I'm a landscape designer, but I am not your landscape designer. Best practices can be different everywhere, different climates, different microclimates, different yards. So you have to do a little local research so that you can decide what's best for you and your yard. The upside of landscape fabric is that it prevents anything from growing up from below, right? So you place the landscape fabric down, you put some mulch on top of it, anything that wanted to come up from below is pretty well blocked. It's pretty good. It, it makes a pretty good barrier from not just uh, weed seeds from germinating, but also from like existing weed roots from growing up underneath. And this is why many people still use it, even landscape professionals. It's also a really quick way to get a transformation in, in a landscape, right? You've got this really weedy area, you just roll out this landscape fabric, you put some uh, mulch on top of it, and then, you know, instantly you have this really nice looking yard. But the people who don't like landscape fabric are the people who just a few years later start to experience problems. First, landscape fabric has been found to decrease the health of your landscape or your garden plants. Will it kill them? No, but they will struggle more because landscape fabric can create this barrier that decreases the flow of, of air and water. And of course, when you first get the stuff, uh, you look at it, water drains through it, you can, you, you can definitely see that air goes through it. But out in the landscape, all of those little holes fill up very quickly with soil and sediment and little bits of mulch, and it, it, it actually clogs up a lot of these little holes, not all of them, but a lot of them, which then decreases the air and water flow. Plant roots and the soil essentially need to breathe. They need to, there needs to be this transfer of, of air, of gases, of water. And if uh, you cut off some of this respiration, you decrease this respiration, it is going to have some sort of effect on plant health. While landscape fabric does smother weeds, it prevents weed seeds from germinating from below. It also can prevent, you know, weeds from coming up from roots from below. While it does all of this well, you have other options. There are other things that you can use to prevent these weeds from growing up from below. Better options. A deep enough initial application of an organic woody mulch material is enough to prevent the majority of weeds without landscape fabric, as long as it's a deep enough initial application. A lot of times when folks come to me and they say, well, if it weren't for the landscape fabric in my yard, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to keep up with the weeds. Or the parts of my yard where I don't have landscape fabric, the weeds are terrible. This is almost always because they did not mulch deeply enough at the initial time of installation. They just, in general, did not mulch deeply enough. And it depends on the material you're using, the, uh, the, the material you're using, the, where you live, your climate. Um, if you have an invasive or aggressive weed species, that needs to be dealt with in a certain way regardless. Uh, but a deep enough initial application, if you're using arborist chips, for example, it's four to six inches deep. And I know that raises a ton of questions too. That settles down. Uh, there's techniques, you know, you, you don't want to bury your plants in four to six inches of mulch, so you need to kind of taper it around your plants. Tons of questions I'm sure this is raising, so be sure to check out my other video. I'll link to it in the, the top right corner of this video right now, and it'll also be linked in the description below. Be sure to watch that video. It'll answer a lot of questions about uh, mulch best practices in general. But the 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 argument, if it weren't for this landscape fabric, I would have much more maintenance. It's because, almost always because, it's just not a deep enough application of mulch. If you think at, at the time of initial installation, you're paying for this landscape fabric, you're paying for just a few inches of mulch, don't, don't pay for the landscape fabric, get a little bit more mulch. Once the weeds below this landscape fabric have been smothered, like the weed roots, for example, have, below have been smothered, the landscape fabric is going to be there serving essentially no purpose. 
the stuff doesn't go away for a very, very long time. It does not decompose. The thing that's interesting is that it actually does degrade pretty quickly. Its effectiveness at preventing weeds from coming in from above or below does does decrease relatively relatively quickly after just a few years. There are other options that are just as effective as this landscape fabric that, that don't hang around more or less forever. Also, if you apply landscape fabric and then a few inches of mulch on top of that, which is the standard practice, the mulch is still going to decompose, which is a wonderful thing. The fabric is the problem in this situation. The landscape fabric is not going to slow down the decomposition of the mulch. It, it, you know, it could prevent a little bit of mixing, but that's actually a good thing. We want this mulch to be on top of the soil surface and decomposing because it builds up soil. The soil creates fertility for your plants. It creates the perfect little ecosystem to, to prevent the majority of weeds from growing in that space. But if you have the landscape fabric, then the mulch on top of that, you're going to start building up soil on top of the landscape fabric. And at that point, that landscape fabric is, is you know, again, not serving any purpose for preventing weed seeds from germinating on the top. The only thing that's doing the work there, the heavy lifting, is the actual mulch that you have applied in, on that space. Then over time, the roots of your garden plants will fight their way through any little cracks that they can they can find their way through in the landscape fabric to grow up closer to the soil surface where there's more air, where there's more water, and also where there's a little bit of nutritious soil there. It kind of attracts the plant roots to grow, to grow through this landscape fabric. Essentially, the fabric kind of gets trapped in there. So all of the plant roots underneath are unhealthy. Your plants, it's encouraging your plants to grow some of these shallow roots that grow up and through the fabric. And then if you want to remove the fabric later on, it's almost impossible to do this. It takes a ton of work. I know people who are doing, who have done it by, you know, pulling out chunks at a time. But it, it just creates this problem where you can't remove the landscape fabric without harming your plants. If you go on a walk in an older neighborhood, you will see spots where this landscape fabric is coming up in like chunks or shreds in some areas. This stuff just tends to get messy over time. And ask anyone who has tried to make changes to a landscape that previously had landscape fabric uh, installed, and you will hear their, their tales, their stories of frustration trying, trying to get rid of this stuff years later. Overall, it just makes a big pain in the neck for someone someday. It's not serving enough of a purpose to make it worth some of these downsides. The best thing to do is to remove the weeds from an area somehow before installing. In some cases, it's best practice to do this before putting the landscape fabric down anyway. You have tons of options for weed removal methods. It's kind of the subject for another video. But let me say that again. The landscape fabric only prevents the weeds from coming up from underneath it. Uh, mulch, a few inches of mulch on top of soil surface, if you've already removed the weeds, it's going to prevent those weed seeds from germinating. It will prevent a lot of weeds from coming up from the roots too. That's just a deep enough application of mulch alone. It's going to get the job done. The addition of landscape fabric is just not necessary if, if you're removing the weeds from the area before you apply the mulch, which most people are doing anyway. Now, if, if you have an aggressive or an invasive weed species, you will need to have some sort of plan, ideally, to remove this weed species from the area before you plant your garden. Because even if you put down, you know, I want to put a garden here, I've got bindweed, for example. You want to plant this garden here, so you put down this landscape fabric, you put a couple inches of mulch on top of that, then you cut holes in the landscape fabric to install your, your garden plants, guess what's going to happen? The, the bindweed's going to come up through the holes in the landscape fabric, just around the base of your plants where you're, you're just constantly going to be pulling it up. If you have an invasive species, it, it's, it's my typically my recommendation to have a plan to completely eliminate it from the area before you install your garden there regardless of whether you use landscape fabric or not. Otherwise, you'll be stuck in this cycle of trying to get rid of this one plant while, while grow this other plant that, that you want there, right? We're trying to get rid of these weed species while simultaneously trying to protect our beautiful garden species. It's this cycle that just creates more work in the long run. So that's, that's why I recommend to people if you have an ag aggressive invasive weed species, talk to a local noxious weed expert and learn what your options are, the best practices for removing that particular species, make a plan, completely eliminate the species from the area, and once that's done, you can then install a garden, and then you don't need landscape fabric. You can just use a deep enough application of some sort of woody or organic mulch material and and you're good to go. No need for the landscape fabric anyway. So this is why, uh, you know, while landscape fabric, it, it does smother, it, in context, there's, there's in, in any kind of garden setting, it's always going to decrease the health of your plants. And in the context of installing a new garden, it's very rare that you actually need 
to have the fabric, that it's going to serve any purpose that the mulch alone is not already going to be serving. If you talk to this local noxious weeds expert, you, you get this recommendation for this particular weed species in your yard, smothering is the best thing to do to get rid of it, then yes, landscape fabric can be used to smother, but it's not your only option and it may not even be the best option. Cardboard is a controversial subject, but sometimes it's a better alternative. Talk to this noxious weed expert and find out. Uh, what's nice is that if your invasive species starts growing through this landscape fabric, then you have, again, this mess of this landscape fabric to pull out, but cardboard, you can always reapply another layer on top of that. Cardboard smothers. It's not something that's good to use as mulch. Similar to landscape fabric, it's not something that is good to use as mulch uh, around plants that you want to keep alive. You should not use it as mulch around your garden plants, but as a temporary smothering solution, cardboard can be really effective. And I have another video where I talk all about this cardboard controversy, the pros and cons, when to use cardboard, in what context. Check it out. I'll link to that in the top right corner right now, as well as uh, in the description below. All of the videos I refer to uh, in, in this video will also be linked in the description below below. What's cool about the cardboard is that after it helps you with the smothering, it decomposes away. It goes away after sometimes a very short amount of time in especially wetter, rainier conditions. It's, it's going to decompose pretty quickly after a few months. And if you're in a situation where you're not dealing with a noxious invasive weed species, you're just dealing with your everyday common annoying garden weeds, you're dealing with maybe a lawn that you want to get rid of, you want to smother that out. Uh, deep enough application of an arborist chip mulch is going to be plenty effective at smothering out the lawn or, or the weeds below. Also, you could do a layer of cardboard, a couple inches of mulch on top of that if you don't have access to as much mulch. Again, check out my other video where I, I, I talk about this in way more detail because there, there are pros and cons to using cardboard. But here in the Pacific Northwest, folks will do this in, in the rainy season, right? In the, in the fall before before the rains start up too much. They'll go out and they'll decide where they want to put a new garden bed in the spring. They'll put this cardboard down on top of the lawn, on top of the weedy area, a couple inches of uh, wood chip mulch, arborist chip mulch on top of that. Uh, and then by spring, that cardboard has decomposed away the weeds, the lawn have smothered away, and then you have a garden bed that you can plant into. So again, don't, don't put that cardboard around plants you want to keep alive because it smothers. But the nice thing is it decomposes. This landscape fabric degrades, but it doesn't go, everything decomposes, right? It just, it go, it takes so long for it to break down and go away that after the first couple of years of getting benefit, you know, you're just going to be dealing with this mostly ineffective fabric that's just going to be creating problems in your landscape. Your next question is probably what, what about the weeds that come in from above? Because, you know, we're, we've talked about how landscape fabric still isn't the best method for preventing weeds that come up from below. Even though it's a barrier, you've got better options. What about the weeds that come in from above? And, and the short answer is that landscape fabric is not helping with that at all. It might make the weeds easier to pull out for the first couple of years after installation, but not that much easier and not enough to make it worth uh, some of the some of these downsides. So the mulch that's on top of the landscape fabric is what's actually preventing these weeds from germinating. You know the weed seeds blow in from wherever they're dropped. They're 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 spread into this mulched area. Some of them are going to germinate. Some of them are not. The organic woody mulch material that you are applying on top of this landscape fabric anyway is what's actually preventing these weed seeds from germinating from above. Now the landscape fabric is said to make it easier to pull these weeds out. I have experience with this too for the first couple of years. That landscape fabric does make it easier. You know, when you get this little weed that gets established, its roots aren't going to penetrate through this new landscape fabric very easily. So when you pull it out, they kind of, you, you get that like Velcro tearing sound. It, it it pulls this out. But over time, after just a couple of years, this landscape fabric is going to degrade. It's going to start to, to get some holes in it and other areas are going to get clogged up with soil. But the weed roots, if, if weeds get a bit of a footing, they're going to start growing through this landscape fabric. Then you, you pull it out. You're going to tear the fabric in spots. It's just, uh, it becomes messy very quickly and it, it's not it's not going to do anything to stop the weeds from germinating from above. Maybe it makes them easier to pull out temporarily, but you still have all of these other downsides. No mulch material is ever going to completely prevent weed seeds from germinating. No, no material, even landscape fabric, is going to prevent all weeds. Mulching deeply enough with an organic woody mulch material initially the first time after you've exposed the soil, after you've installed a new garden bed, is enough 
to prevent the majority of, of the weeds. And again, check out my other video where I go into more detail on this. So we've learned that it's bad for plants. It's not the most effective method for smothering out weeds, especially after the first couple of years. It makes it ever so slightly easier for you to pull out weeds, but just for the first couple of years and then down the road it creates all of these problems. But what about other contexts? What about under rocks, for example? What about under pathways or hardscaping? Now this can be different and I don't comparatively have as much knowledge about the finer points of installing pathways or hardscaping, but I understand that it is very commonly used anytime you want to keep rocky materials from sinking into the soil. A common example being rocks or gravel and pathways are underneath hardscaping. Depending on how deep you go with the rocky material and the likelihood of weeds sprouting up from underneath, the landscape fabric itself is probably not doing much of anything really for weed suppression. But it may help your hardscaping in other ways like preventing materials from uh, sinking into the soil or mixing with the soil over time, especially under compaction. But what about mulching a garden with rocks? Now this is, this is an interesting one. In drier environments, weeds are said to not grow as abundantly as they do in my ecosystem here in the mild and rainy Pacific Northwest. My understanding is that mulching with rocks in those ecosystems is more of a reflection of what is typically found in those environments, and thus the weeding problems are nominal, so landscape fabric is not really worth the downsides. But here in the seasonally rainy and also weedy Pacific Northwest, there's no perfect answer. So let's consider some pros and cons. A con is that the landscape fabric will decrease the health of your garden plants. A pro is that it will keep the weeds from coming up from below. The con, just as before, weed seeds will definitely still blow in and germinate from above. The landscape fabric stops stuff from growing up from underneath, but it doesn't help with stuff coming in from above. And rocks are good at preventing, you know, weeds from germinating at first, but the, I mean, even so, weed seeds will blow in and get caught in the spaces between rocks and they'll germinate. And especially over time, little bits of organic materials, this and that, will blow in and decompose in the cracks between the rocks. So even after just just a few years, you're going to be dealing with pulling out weeds from uh, the spaces in between rocks, no matter what, regardless of whether you use landscape fabric or not. A pro is that it keeps your rocks from sinking down into the soil or mixing with the soil, especially if, if this is in an area that it's going to be walked on frequently. So there's no perfect answer and I am not going to tell you what to do, just some food for thought. I like to think that if you are not using, uh, if you're not mulching with decorative rock, you know, as a mulch around your plants, then, you know, if it's not around plants, then maybe the landscape fabric makes more sense. But if it is around plants, then, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have experience with this, you've used uh, decorative rock as, as a mulch material in one of these climates uh, with landscape fabric, without landscape fabric, love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Your experiences might, might help someone else out. Also worth mentioning that for temporary weed suppression and, and semi-agricultural purposes, landscape fabric can be economical to use uh, to cover pathways seasonally. You can, you can roll it out on top, then you can fold it up at the end of the season, and then, then you don't have to deal with the weeds that would come up in the paths. It does degrade, landscape fabric does degrade faster when it's exposed to direct sunlight, just keep that in mind, but it may be useful in this context. Remember that not all landscape fabric is created equal, so just be sure to do a little research to make sure you're purchasing the right kind of landscape fabric for, for whatever you're using it for. I share my personal favorite garden mulching methods in the next video, which should pop up on the screen just about now. A playlist that includes all of my videos about mulch, best practices, myths, and tips and mistakes is linked in the description below this video. So if you wanna learn what you should do next in your project or just learn more about your options, be sure to check that out. And if you're new here, hello, my name is Eve. I'm a landscape designer, I'm a horticulturist, and welcome to Garden Project Academy. I offer online courses and resources to help you with your next garden project. Check out the links in the description below this video to learn more, like a free mini course on how to choose the perfect plant, all kinds of good stuff. Thank you so much for watching and good luck with your next garden project.